Hello everyone, my name is Topanga and today I wanted to do a little deep dive into runway photography, also known as catwalk photography. I got the urge to look into runway photography after watching Bliss Foster's Paris Fashion Week video, where I saw my first glimpse into the photography side of things. Once the show starts, the pressure is on for these folks. It's incredibly high. They can't yell cut or ask someone to walk again. It's like nature photography. But before we jump into that, I wanted to quickly go over the roots of runway and runway photography. In the 1860s, the father of haute couture, Charles Frederick Wirth, introduced the idea of showcasing his collections on live models instead of mannequins that were typically used at the time. In the 1900s, we saw the introduction of fashion parades, but it wasn't until around 1910 that we would see catwalks as we know them today. During the beginning, photographers weren't allowed into these events as designers feared that their designs would be copied and stolen. Now, I do need to point out that you can find photographs from earlier shows. This was because fashion journalists were allowed to attend and they would sometimes get to take photographs, but it was very rare and not typically allowed. In 1943, we would see the launch of Press Week, which we would come to know as New York Fashion Week. And then shortly after, in 1947, Christian Dior would finally be one of the first designers to allow photographers to photograph his collection. Huzzah! However, all would not remain in the photographer's favor as throughout the 1960s, fashion shows continued to be closed affairs, typically taking place in salons, and they would allow clients and buyers to come in and get to see their collection and then order what they'd like. And then fashion journalists were also allowed in. In his book, Catwalking, Chris Moore says, at the time, they did just think that we were spies. And he really only got into shows early on because his wife was a fashion journalist. He describes it as, we photographers would go from fashion house to fashion house. We would be offered one model to photograph who was wearing a dress of their choosing, and we would have to pay the model about four pounds to do so. During the 1970s, we would continue to see documentation from photographers and fast forward to 2010, where Alexander McQueen would be the first designer to live stream his collection and social media's grasp would take hold. So obviously the runway scene has changed drastically over the years. We've moved away from salons to grander stages and models instead of mannequins, but things also changed drastically for photographers. Photographer Niall McInerney said in an interview, in the fashion world of these days, the cameraman has a set position, shooting from afar with a long telephoto lens. But until around 1995, there used to be a space for the cameraman at the front row near the runway where they could move freely. Thinking about it, we were probably annoying everyone in the crowd. This explains why in older runway photos, you get a more dynamic shot range. Things feel more immersed because it really does feel like the photographer is squatting right there in front of the audience. The set position McInerney is referring to is called the pit or pack, and it has its own hierarchy of sorts. When asked how to secure a decent spot for photographing shows, McInerney says, that's the hardest part about it. Only one person can get dead center. You can go dead center, but then your elevation changes because you're behind them. He mentions that it's difficult not to step on anyone's toes because while he held the position of house photographer, the prime spot, which is dead center, belongs to the designer's photographer. One of the funniest things is when we talk about hierarchy. If you jump in from show to show, you get to the next show, and you see this so many times, you'll get there and I say, oh, excuse me, sir, you're in the house photographer's spot. He responds, I was here before you. I say, sorry, sir, but it doesn't work like that. And he says, I've been waiting here for two hours for this. I'm like, you could have been waiting here for a whole week for all I care. If you stay in that spot, if you refuse to move, security will remove you. Don't get the wrong idea though. The Pact is a supportive bunch full of people who absolutely love what they're doing. Chris Moore had a fall during a Saint Laurent show that left him hospitalized. But his counterparts got together and made sure that he was supplied with a selection of the best photos from the show so he didn't drop a ball. It's not as competitive as it looks, he said. In addition to photographers being grouped together like sardines, McInerney talks about the growth of corporatism and commercialism in the industry. 
I went to the show in the late 90s or early 2000s. The whole thing was corporate. They'd only let you take photos with the company logo behind. It's very common now. You see it all the time. The rise of digital photography also shook the work environment. He adds, everyone has a digital camera now or with their iPhones. People stopped looking at shows and instead of carried about photographing. You see it in most shows these days the whole crowd photographing. These changes would cause McInerney to leave the runway industry after working from 1976 to 2000, saying it had lost its charm and appeal. This environment of everyone being a photographer has also changed the way people view catwalk photos. I feel like when runway events are going on, we get such a rapid influx of photos as the day goes on that we really forget how much time and effort goes into gathering those. McInerney said in an interview, timing is one of the most important things in our job. Timing on counting footsteps, looking at the feet. I'm looking at the feet because the shot they want is one foot in front of the other, flat, then the arms swinging and you want to try and keep both hands in the picture because there's nothing weirder than seeing somebody with one hand. You count steps, you get into a rhythm and you try and wait for that one magic moment where everything just comes in. This doesn't even include photographers showing up early for lighting checks or trying to secure a decent spot that doesn't already belong to the house photographer or designer's photographer. Sometimes you'll even hear photographers at shows yelling at people to uncross their legs or lower their cell phones. Okay, so did you hear that? That was a guy in the photography pit yelling for everyone to put their iPhones down. There's two things that affect us. One is people's feet. They cross their legs and what they don't realize is that their feet are dangling over the runway. I don't want to see it, the designer doesn't want to see it, and you don't want to see it on TV. Feet are really a problem to us. People holding things in cell phones have become a real pain, McInerney said. You might be thinking, oh, that's ridiculous and rude, but you have to remember, those people are there to do a job. McInerney explains, you're not allowed to miss a shot. The designers don't want to see one picture out of 50. A lot of people would say, well, it's only one. But guess what? The designer doesn't care because that's the one outfit he wanted to use on the front of his lookbook. It has to be 100% success rate every show. 90% doesn't work, 99% doesn't work. You have to shoot every look, as well as a headshot, a half length, a full length, and accessories. There's a reason I don't typically photograph events. I'm not a very assertive person and I like to take my time while working. I'll leave it to the pros. Well, that is all the time that I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned something new or would like to see more of these mini deep dives into the different sides of photography, let me know. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a likey like, all the good YouTube jazz, and until next time, bye! Mwah.